Hello and welcome. This time, last time we talked about the chain structure. This time we're talking about the parallel structure. So another structure of, of a measurement system, a possible structure. I now show you the structure. I will draw it. So I do have two transfer elements, two measurements, let's say, in parallel. Okay. And on both of these of these elements there are some physical units working. There are some input signals on both of them. Okay. Then both do have an output signal. And these output signals, they are added to each other, but one with negative sign. Okay. And the result of this, this is our output. Okay. So that's the structure. So we do have two input values, xi1 xi2 okay. we have two blocks we have two output values then x01 x02 okay. and we have a combined output value xo okay and here we have the transfer and now the interesting or the most interesting part usually it's the same it's the same K. So this means, this means here, XO, wow, it's the fat one. The skinny, tiny, pointy. Ah. XO1 is XI1 multiplied by K, and this is XI2 multiplied by K. Okay? And here, this is x01 minus x02, which equals xi1 multiplied by k minus xi2 multiplied by k. And this equals k multiplied xi1 minus xi2. So the difference. The difference between the two input value values, this is what I get as an output. What is this good for? Yeah. There are, I mean, obviously we could shift. We could shift if here, if we have uh, some measurement, let's say uh, xi1 is from zero to two to 300 volts. Yeah. And let's say K is one. And XI2 is 200 volt constant. Yeah. Then this would mean our XO the output is starting from zero minus 200 minus 200 to 100 volts. Okay. Because XO is XI1 minus 200 multiplied by one. This is K. Zero means 200, 300 means 100, that's it. Obviously, I can simply use it to shift. Yeah. Okay, then I shift it. <clears throat> a more interesting part is maybe if there is a disturbing source yeah, and I cannot 
cannot get it out cannot get it out uh, so let's what one one thing which is done this is uh, XI1 XI1 is uh, I want to measure radioactivity yeah so on XI1 I have the radioactivity radio activity of my element or whatever I want to measure yeah but the issue is when measuring a radioactivity if it's low yeah I also have natural radioactivity yeah in just in the atmosphere and this is sometimes high sometimes low depending on the activity of the sun and so on so on XI1 I do have the radioactivity of the element plus the natural activity okay and on XI2 I just measure the natural the natural activity yeah? so I end up XI1 minus XI2 is radioactivity plus natural activity minus natural activity zack zack this is compensating and it just measure the radioactivity yeah. so this can be used to filter out something which which is not which I don't want to measure yeah. for instance uh, for instance uh, force measurement yeah. force measurement with uh, with Den mesh streifen, uh, so with little things you apply and measure measure the movement of the material. Yeah? If you if you apply force to a material, it will stretch a little, and you measure the stretching by applying uh, a grid with very thin thin uh, metal parts usually metal maybe maybe sometimes it's also also semiconductor we get we get to this yeah we will get to this measurement of force and momentum however one issue is it's just measuring the movement of the of the material yeah however the material is also shrinking or expanding with the heat yeah so just because it's getting warmer doesn't mean I have additional tension. I just measure it. Yeah? So I could apply one time with stress and temperature change and one time just with temperature change and the temperature change, the movement, the stretching, the shrinking about the, uh, because of the temperature change is compensated automatically. Yeah, that's one possibility, and sometimes, sometimes I do even have, I do even have a differential, differential uh, sensors. Yeah, one differential sensor is this. It's a potentiometer. I'm pretty sure you know. This potentiometer do have uh, a total total value of R zero of R. I call it R. Yeah. And depending depending on the position yeah, here in the middle position, yeah, I have here on this side. I I, oh, I will simply draw it here. Sorry. On this side I have R1. Yeah? On this side I have R2. This R is divided into two parts by this sliding contact here. Okay. So if I now measure here R1 yeah? and I measure here R2 and I have exactly 
this structure behind. K, K minus dip dip dip. Here's XO, and here this one I call delta R. That's the change. Okay, so. I will simply say R is two times R zero. Why I say this, you will notice, yeah, because then R one is two times. If we are in the middle position, yeah, that's the sliding context from the middle position. I want to measure the position. So R1 is R0, yeah? and here we have minus delta R, okay? Because if I go to plus here, this R1 is reduced. If I go to minus, this R0, R1 is getting bigger. And this R2 yeah? is also this R0, that's the half of the R, because if I'm in the middle position, I have the half, okay, plus delta R, okay. Now let's see what is happening here. So, this XO, I will again say K is 1, because it does not really, ah, let's write it, K. Yeah. And this is R1 minus R2. This equals K R0 minus delta R minus R0 plus delta R. Okay, R0 is gone. R minus, of course, again, because this minus and this plus it gives minus. <laughs> Sorry about this. Our zero is gone. And what is left is K multiplied by minus two delta R. Two, factor two. So it's twice as sensitive than with a single line. Yeah? This is only possible with differential, differential sensors. But you see, it's possible. So this parallel structure does have some advantages in, in cases. Okay. Parallel structure. Last time chain structure, this time parallel structure. Next time, next video, circle structure. Also circle structure, you will see, does have some benefit sometimes. What to use depends on the situation. Okay, so for this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.